Welcome back. Now that we've seen the very basics of functions and their syntax, arguments, return values, etc., we're now going to talk about some other details, some important things you need to know about functions and function adjacent topics. So this section is not really one monolithic topic, but a couple of related things that I've put together into one section. So we have a couple goals. The first is to understand scope. When I introduced let and const and briefly talked about var, I mentioned we would come back and discuss scope and how those different keywords impact scope. We're going to start by talking about that in this section. It does relate to functions. Then we'll talk a lot about higher order functions, functions as a value in, in JavaScript, how we can pass functions to other functions. We'll take a look at some existing built-in functions and methods that expect you to pass a function as an argument. And that's our main goal, our goals for this section. So we're going to start with scope. Scope is kind of like variable visibility. It's it's this idea that depending on where you define a variable, other pieces of your code may or may not have access to that value. And a variable scope is that window, it's the portion of your code where other values have access to it, or other functions or other pieces of the code can access and manipulate that value. So there's multiple pieces, different ways that scope behaves in JavaScript, and that's what we're gonna talk about in the next few videos. And the first type of scope is called function scope. So when we define a variable in a function, like I have right here, it doesn't matter what the function is, it's called help me. We have a variable called message, I'm on fire. Inside the function, of course, we have access to message. If I were to log it or just get the value, it's I'm on fire. But outside the bounds of that function, we don't have access. I get an error if I try and access message down here it is scoped to this function. That's what this box is representing. So this probably makes sense and you may have encountered this already. If you're brand new, you might have played around still. If we have some function, it doesn't matter what it's called, let's just go with LOL. And then I define some variable in there, let mm, person equals Tom. And then let's also do one with const, const age equals 45. And let's do one with var. So var color equals teal. Okay, so we have three variables going on. If I try and access any of them outside of this LOL function, like let's start with person, console.log person, we're not gonna have a good time. Person is not defined. And you might think, well, maybe if you call LOL, then those variables will be, they'll come into existence. Right now we're defining that function, but this code is not executing. So if I execute it first, same problem. Person is scoped to this function, LOL. I have access to it in here, of course, but not outside. And if I tried that instead with age, which is defined with const, same error. And if I try it with color, which is defined with var, once again, we get the exact same error just for a different name for a variable person, age, and color, none of these exist outside the bounds of this function. They're scoped to it. So this means that we can have multiple functions that have similar or the same variable names. I could have another function, we'll call this one change color, and I'll set a variable called color. Let's go with let color equals, and this time it will be purple. And we can also have, uh, let's do another age. We'll do const age equals 19. And we'll console.log one of them. Let's console.log age here. And let's also do it here, console.log age. And then we'll call LOL and we'll call change color. I'll get rid of this console.log at the bottom. You can see we get unique values. In this context, age is 45. In this context, age is 19. So they are scoped. Those variables that we declared in a given function are scoped to that function. They are visible only in here. After the fact, we can call the function, but we cannot access or manipulate those variables from down here or up top. We are not in the same scope. Here's another example. This time I have a variable called bird that I've defined up top, or it could be down below. It doesn't matter where it's defined, but I have bird. And then I have another let bird inside this function. So now I have two variables with the exact same name. And remember, if I try and do that in the same scope, like let high equals high, and then let high equal 
3, I get an error. It's telling me high has already been declared. So it's not saying high has already been declared anywhere in your code. You can only have one high. It's more along the lines of high has been declared in this scope. You cannot have another high declared in the same scope. But we can do it like this. We can have one variable with one name outside this function and another variable with the exact same name in the function. Compare that to what we had up top. It was the same idea. We had age in one function and age in a different function, different scopes. So we have different scopes here. Two beautiful birds, by the way, if you ever want to Google what these look like. Oh, mandarin ducks, golden pheasants, really pretty birds. Let's console.log bird down here. And let's do the same thing at the very bottom. Run my code. Well, right now I'm not executing birdwatch, but here bird is set to mandarin duck. Let's call birdwatch. Now we get birdwatch, which runs console.log golden pheasant. It's finding the nearest bird, which is in this scope. Then we console.log bird outside the function. Bird is set to mandarin duck. So this diagram kind of explains this scenario. Here we have two scopes. We have the orange or yellow box, which represents the scope of this function. Bird, where it's set to golden pheasant, is only accessible in birdwatch. But then we have this larger scope where bird the first bird was declared outside the function, so its pink box extends down below as well. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. In this context, let and const will behave the same way. If I updated both lets to instead be const and run this, we get the same output. If I update them to both be var, we get the same output as well. But in the next video, we'll see a very significant difference between how let and const behave and how var behaves in certain scenarios. So we have more scope to talk about that's next.